Hi, this is Natalie. I've just created a small mind map to basically illustrate how I see the uh, structure of how a village supporting international and local special needs kids in Bali, Indonesia. Uh, yeah, a bit about the interplay with and the role of the YSM uh, or charity um, school itself. So, yeah, this is my idea. Um, basically, the role of the YSM or school is to coordinate uh, several of the programs or basically be like the base or the center. Uh, first of all, we have obviously the special needs activity program for school age and post school age kids so it's really the fund fundamental basis and uh, land ownership you know the whole custodianship of the entity altogether of the village so uh, of course there's um, this program which uh, Basically, we have our therapists and teachers who they can be international, uh, sponsored through KITAS or, uh, yeah, and either be doing in-kind work for the ISN or be paid. And I still have to check a bit on them with international therapists. I'm pretty sure uh, we could employ people. I would like to see more um, that the international families their contribution helps to pay for therapists to come there so that the services of the therapist can be offered at more of a local rate to local families so it stays accessible to everybody so we also have um, people that might be on international or social visas i'm thinking of students university practicums um, internships type volunteer work and social exchanges which are pretty popular in Bali I don't know what that box is doing there um, I thought I deleted it <laughs> and then we have our local therapists staff and teachers who basically are employed by the YSM that's all part of the normal YSM structure um, that we see pretty commonly in Bali so our daily program of activities, which is supported by the local staff, um, there can be in-kind contribution from local families and also the international internships and social programs, which I just outlined before. Um, so in our programs, I would hope to see music, both instrumental, traditional, rhythm therapy, there being like, um, English language exchange or other languages as well um, aid class time and supervision can be part of what interns and people doing their exchange or volunteer work come and help with also in the gardening um, I'm looking at yeah being an organic farm in the school and also natural building, there being yoga, dance, brain, brain gym type activities and therapies that are basically just part of a daily program, which our kids do. Um, I don't know if you've seen some of my videos about Sarihati. They basically work on the basis of natural learning. And yeah, they, they have some really beautiful programs and activities. We've got excursions and uh, social skills and jobs in the community business like uh, similar to Sujakitarius in Ubud they have a warong that's basically attached to their kids activity and community center well it's activity center so it becomes more like a community center for the um, you know people can walk in me as a parent I came there with my daughter one day and we just joined in their program and we aid in the warong and yeah the kids there they have the opportunity to learn hospitality skills um, do cooking in the kitchen you know all the skills associated with hospitality and they also have a craft shop there as well where they sell their crafts and arts which helps to raise money for the ISM 
So I see it mainly being coordinated and managed by the ISN itself and local parents and the, the board. Like, um, I want it to be very locally owned, have that uh, sense of ownership and, uh, yeah, just that beautiful spirit of um, the community, what I experience in Bali. Uh, so a big part of it is the community farming and I see that's where, like, a large part of the community will come together around farming and um, enabling special needs children to be involved in meaningful activities around community farming. Um, yeah, which creates like a natural protection, I feel, around our kids. Um, and with all these things, you'll see in a second, like international families who come and stay in the village and the community they also participate in these activities these are all like um, basically shared activities where international visitors can blend in so uh, sale of food and crafts and other produce so yeah this is basically the ISN's role and parents as well I just see it as yeah like a really central hub for the community not only parents of the special needs kids, but like local farmers and um, uh, yeah, other local people being able to get on board and come become involved and yeah, benefit from the produce and sharing in what is co-created. Uh, right, yes. Yeah, so there they are managing the warung and the restaurant as a community and the school program. Yes, yeah, basically run and managed by the ISM. So yeah, this is, this kind of came in third, but it should be fourth, um, is an, a training, training and exchange program. So I see that like there's an opportunity to outreach to other YSMs, um, other uh, places where people might not have as, be as well trained to provide for and care for children with special needs and I see there this is my little friend Art I don't know how he well I do know how he got there but I didn't want to delete him because I think he's really funny he's got a really funny laugh he's my relationships coach at the moment so when the uh, program is all up and running and I mean I anticipate like it's generating a fair bit of income so I'd like to see that income be shared to other YSMs that are lesser resourced, maybe from rural, remote areas um, where staff can come and actually be, you know, participate in training or internships and, uh, yeah, our staff and volunteers can either substitute them in their hometowns and assist at the local level there and, yeah, we can help train more people and enrich the skills for working with disabilities and um, yeah basically I don't see it as like um, profit making business I don't want there to be people investing for the sake of profit and business I want everything to be basically feeding back into the community of course there's jobs and people will be paid in all the positions but yeah I think um, all going well that and if there is surplus funds then that's going to go towards these social causes so bringing us to the PT accommodation business attached to the ISN so every uh, from what I am aware of every charity or ISN can have a PT business attached which is basically a uh, means for the charity to uh, bring in income of course it's all closely audited and all the income from the business must go directly into the charity and um, the charity's aims and causes so this is basically uh, going to be building infrastructure of the village for there to be a homestay the school everything like the building and infrastructure and homestay houses uh, running workshops which can also be a form of income and workshops can actually also help build the houses in the village so yeah, we have an income from workshops and then the byproduct of the workshops is that we have houses in the village to rent to uh, international families, uh, to host retreats. I'd see like at a high end, we could maybe have one or two 
retreats a year where uh, yeah basically whoever it is and whatever retreat they're doing get to actually come in and um, their guests get to come and stay in the village or their kids can come to the school and uh, they get to enjoy the benefits of living in a community where there's organic food being grown there's a restaurant there's like all these uh, businesses and services sprouting up around what are in, what we're intrinsically doing and yeah for me it just it makes sense to have uh, these opportunities for local families and create like something that's actually really thriving like a community and yeah the people can from the outside come in and experience that I mean I see like that's every what everyone's striving for is like this sustainability when and growing your own food and having fresh produce like it can be a part of natural just normal everyday life so uh, yeah I think maybe one or two of those high-end retreats a year uh, just would help to provide some injection of income and also just to promote and share our idea in a wider audience uh, so retreats and so the but the basic basis is the accommodation business that's open for international visitors and families so i see that um international families would purchase like either like you know timeshare accommodation package and basically be able to come and spend like two weeks to one month to six months per year in the accommodation facility and then basically the children can come and attend the school the parents can attend workshops they can do yoga they can just enjoy living in the community and community life and um yeah just be part of this supported program oh pardon me so and here too we have um exchange social volunteers or internships uh, we have to be careful in Indonesia using the word volunteer but yeah basically it's internships where I see people international visitors can uh, who want to volunteer can stay in the village in return for their in-kind contribution and that can be in all the areas of the school whether it's supervision whether it's sharing musical talents whether it's uh, one-on-one -on -one caring with kids um, they can be training as well we could offer training programs in disabilities to which meet international standards i mean why not but it's not something i'm looking at right now uh, we have okay so the name this is just a name idea um, bamboo creative because that's what i'm involved in at the moment in terms of an organization with more of a social cause helping to support local uh, families or businesses to become established that uh, help to hold workshops and uh, create a building that hopefully will be a model for uh, the village i'd like to see it being really like eco-sustainable earthship zero waste like utilizing re the renewable technologies that are able to be implemented at a village scale that don't require a lot of capital investment that basically can help the greater proportion of the world's population 70 or 80 percent of it to uh, actually be able to afford to be sustainable so uh, that's the sort of that's my own real passion and drive and yeah that's what i like to share through through this bamboo creative so whether that's deemed as appropriate by a local school I really don't mind it's just a name but um, yeah that's the idea behind what I've been doing at the moment so here we have local families yeah being employed and supported to establish and maintain supported businesses like uh, of around the accommodation business thing like laundry housekeeping transport gardening maintenance and then basically was that it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I know I can't go backwards. Um, but yeah, basic. Oh, it's missed a whole section. 
that's annoying. Um, yeah, so basically the uh, local families and the uh, community business are all being based around natural farming, community farming and that, and also workshops and creative arts. So, and music, of course, and yoga and dancing and, <laughs> uh, yeah, just natural learning, basically. So, um, yeah, all that. I'd like to see local families being able to, uh, if they want to live in the village, be able to exchange basically their time, but also be paid like a local wage to, um, maybe they don't like the style of housing I've designed, I don't know. I know local families seem to, the Balinese families have a more like a local compound style of living and whether I will actually convert Balinese people to uh, bamboo as opposed to <laughs> cement uh, is yet to be seen. Uh, but yeah, I'd like it to be inclusive and accessible to local families at a local level. So that was the main thing at that point. All right, well, I've run out of uh, arms to um, on about, so I'll close it there for now. Thank you for listening.